Hello and welcome back to my series in Factorio, in which I'm attempting to build my very first mega factory. My name is Azrael. Come along with me as we continue our adventure. Now, one thing I forgot to do here in my uh, defensive perimeter loading station is that uh, the the outposts are also going to be requesting stack inserters, so I wanted to go ahead and add that in over there and uh, make sure that those got onto the train. Of course, in uh, in Figuring all, all that stuff out, the uh, inserters ended up putting a bunch of stuff where they didn't need to be. Um, speaking of stack inserters, I realized over here in my uh, inserter facility that stack inserters were not properly being uh, produced because of the lack of electronic circuits. I don't know how I've gone this long without that uh, ever running out. Uh, another thing I wanted to do is uh, a user pointed out to me that uh, by using storage chests for all of my output, uh, means that my logistics network could eventually uh, just fill them up with a whole bunch of other random crap and we definitely don't want that to happen so I'm replacing them all with passive provider chests now my, my logistics network right now has been set up where ideally those kinds of overloads wouldn't actually happen because I'm trying to keep my production to a minimum uh, but of course going down the line that that's, it's a dangerous precedent to set uh, so it's better to get that taken care of uh, before it becomes a problem. So yeah, I just took all of the uh, the storage chests out of my uh, miscellaneous facility and replaced them with passive providers. And while I'm over here, I want to add in another thing that uh, I had in production at one time, uh, a long way in the past. But uh, since I... I uh, completely tore everything up to put in the new master bus. I never got around to putting them back in. And that is the production of uh, solar panels and accumulators. So we're going to dedicate another rack spot to producing those items. Now first we're going to take care of the solar panels over here which need copper plates, steel plates, and electronic circuits. And I'm just going to have two uh, assemblers dedicated to building those items. I just need to move these uh, inputs around a little bit. Alright, now they're going to feed in and they're both output to the same chest. Uh, obviously, it, it'll keep things a little more organized that way. And then get them producing. There it goes. Put down a little bit of light so that uh, you might be able to see what we're doing as long as the power holds out, which obviously doesn't last very much longer. One of the main reasons I wanted to get this done is because of those those brownouts that we're constantly experiencing. Uh, once I finally clear out all the biters around my uh, my square, uh, there'll be plenty of room to be putting up new solar panel arrays, so it's good to have the, uh, the supplies ready for when that happens. And then over here we're just going to do the same thing with the accumulators. Accumulators need uh, uh, iron plates and batteries, now, fortunately, I have both of those items on the main bus. I uh, just had to get the batteries in from a shared uh, belt. And then, of course, join it back up with the iron plates up here. And it's the same kind of system where they're just outputting to one chest. And we're just one tile away from the logistics network, so I put down another RoboPort. But then I think the, uh, the RoboPorts that are surrounding... The, uh, the, this one right here uh, should be able to cover the area without having that extra RoboPort in there. But then I realized that, once again, living up to my name, I am one tile off. So now I need to move the, the new RoboPort over by one tile, which meant I had to make some room in my inventory for all of the robots that just suddenly got put into my, my own inventory. Alright, but now that is up and running and the robots can cover that whole area... So that's all well and good. Now I have a bunch of solar panels and accumulators sitting in my junk area. So I want to get my robots bringing them all over here so that they can all be in one place. I'm going to put some requester chests down here to get the the uh, the robots to bring those items in. And here they all come, marching along. And uh, we'll let them do that while we take care of a few other things. Alright, I'm back over here in my military. Uh, I want to set up a requester chest that collects items that I will need to actually build my defensive perimeter outposts. So I'm going to start off with a constant combinator over here. 
uh, that is that I'm going to set to the items necessary for a uh, uh, an outpost there. I'm then going to feed those signals into an arithmetic combinator which multiplies everything by three so that the uh, requester chest actually has enough supplies for three defensive outposts instead of just one. And so here I am I'm setting up the initial signals for all the items that I'm actually producing. I need to go ahead and occasionally check with the blueprint to see what it's it's asking for. And it, uh, aside from like the obvious, the uh, the turrets and the walls and stuff like that, it also needs power lines and stack inserters and robo ports and a couple of other things that I'm not even actually uh, producing yet, like the rail and chain signals, as well as a few lights. Uh, Eventually, I will add those to the miscellaneous facility, uh, just like everything else, uh, because I will be needing quite a few of those in production. So for now, that should be enough to at least get me most of the way there. So I'm going to head, go ahead and let the robots fill that up. And uh, in the meantime, there's another thing that I want to build, another little blueprint down here, and that is a uh, self-sufficient radar outpost that uh, has seven solar panels and six accumulators as well as some built-in defenses uh, just in case the biters come along and decide they don't like where I put this and it all fits neatly inside a little square I'm gonna put a, a wall around that and uh, you know th this this will be helpful when I go out in, into the wilderness and start staking out my territory uh, create a blueprint for that, pick everything up, but then of course my uh, my logistics network construction bots are going to pick up the rest of that instead of putting it back into my own inventory. Uh, so I'm going to have to go down and make sure that uh, I have enough of those supplies for myself. I'm just trying to make some room in my inventory as usual by getting rid of some of the things that I just don't need. Electric engines, uh, regular things, getting some blueprints put into the book, getting the stone out of my inventory and things like that. It, there's just too much stuff in my inventory that since I am kind of a hoarder I don't like the idea of getting rid of things because eventually I'm gonna be needing them again and you know I already have it I don't want to have my robots take it away and then put it right back in again later so well, <laughs> it, it, it's an, along with my little OCD problem there I also have that bit of a hoarding issue as you've no doubt uh, been able to tell but uh, let's see here I, I also decide I want to uh, bring the batteries out of my junk area and put them into the spot uh, there in the miscellaneous facility where they are being produced just so that there's no bottleneck there and as you can see that's filling up as it leads down into the main bus there's just a whole bunch of other things down here that eventually I do need to get sorted out I'm gonna pick up a few of these extra remaining boxes all right, and uh, before I do much of it, anything else, I'm going to craft up a few more beacons and try to help out the uh, the advanced circuit flow. And of course, I also want to put on all these uh, passive provider chests in my military facility as well, so that uh, they don't get bogged down with additional storage in the future. Now I'm checking out the uh, the best places that I can go out into the wilderness to start clearing the biters out of my square, and I think I'm going to start with the northeastern region. Uh, first, I want to get these beacons down and uh, fill them up with some uh, speed uh, modules. Then I realize that I'm really just uh, adding them to the place that already has quite a few. Uh, in place and the uh, the machines down there on the end aren't really getting enough materials for the beacons to make sense so instead I add them to another uh, another column to just try to improve that throughput a little bit more and of course it's all dependent upon the uh, production of plastics which will be sorted out in the near future and in the meantime these robots were taking stuff out of the passive providers and putting it right back into their own requester chest uh, just sort of creating a, a bizarre little uh, feedback loop on itself. So I had to adjust some of those values. Alright, but uh, it looks like we're, we're getting really close to just being able to go out and take care of things. I want to get some wall segments. 
I, I need to get some other things out of my inventory here. I'm not really using a whole lot of shotgun shells. Uh, at least not the, in as much as I have in my inventory. So, uh, there we go. Get a, a few more things out. And now it's just time to get rid of these requester chests altogether. It looks like they've, they've done their job. Anyway, uh, we're going to start heading out into the wilderness to take care of the uh, biter problems here in the northeastern quadrant. And this is going to take a while. This is probably going to uh, you know, occupy the next 10 or so minutes of the video. And uh, I know that there's really not a whole lot to uh, explain as I'm doing this, because this is all basically just run-in, flamethrower, you know, the crap out of everything, and then move on. But I'm also going to be up here setting down these, uh, these radar outposts so that we can kind of keep an eye on... The, uh, the biters in case they try to start moving back into this now vacated territory uh, but uh, that won't it's really not very exciting I, I know that it, it's just a lot of watching me do the same thing over and over again uh, and I usually like to take these moments to talk about uh, various things that are have cropped up in the most recent Friday factorio facts that uh, they they put out. And uh, in the most recent Friday facts was a mention of a, uh, a night vision overhaul. Uh, I, I know a couple episodes back I finally got around to crafting some night vision goggles for myself. And then promptly took them right back out of my uh, my little arsenal because people were saying that it, it really does uh, lower the quality of the video as they try to watch. All it really does right now is just put a green wash over everything which, uh, in, coupled with YouTube compression, just sort of makes everything look flat and loses detail. So I decided not to wear them anymore. But in the future, it looks like they are going to be making some changes to how it processes the night vision aspect of the game, where instead of it just being a green overlay, it will try to preserve some of the contrast that you you naturally see in the game such as the shadows and and whatnot and then of course when you get near actual light sources it diminishes the effect almost down to nothing uh, because there's no need to add the uh, the effect to an area that uh, is already lit up it would just you know under I think real world situations you add a, a, a night vision effect to a well lit area and you'd nearly go blind from the uh, the effect that you see and they obviously don't want to be blinding their their players and I don't think you really could because in 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 the world of computer gaming you can only make something so bright on a screen so <laughs> it, it wouldn't really be much of a thing anyway so they, they figured out a way to diminish the the night vision aspect around areas that are already well lit which also encourages players to use more lighting in their their uh, factories so uh, that they have some some uh, uh, previews on there that talk about or that, that, that demonstrate the effect that they're going for and it actually does look like it might just work out rather nicely for the future so in the 0 0.15 update uh, we will be seeing, hopefully, uh, the return of night vision. So, in the meantime, though, of course, whenever it gets dark and I'm out in the wilderness, it's really difficult to see what I'm doing. Uh, until, of course, I set something on fire, and then you can see that part really well. Alright, we've made our way to the uh, eastern coastline. Uh, now it's just a matter of kind of uh, backtracking a little bit to get the, uh, the bases that I missed. And just, uh, you know, making my way around here. And uh, you can s see all the, the things that have been left behind from my previous excursions out here. There's a whole bunch of alien artifacts on the ground out there. That will be something that I probably uh, uh, won't miss too much. Because they've also talked about how in the 0 0.15 update they're going to be getting rid of alien artifacts altogether. So you won't have to go around picking up after yourself after uh, clearing out some... Uh, Biter nest, and, and you know, at first I was a little hesitant to that idea, but uh, the, after going through this much combat, you you start to see that as a blessing rather than a, a bad thing. So, 
you kind of really can't wait for that to come around. Apparently that they are estimating that the 0 0.15 will be available experimentally uh, probably in February at some time, so that's, that's about two months away from where we are right now. Uh, so anyway, as I'm going around here, I have to put down some of those radar outposts. I'm already out of wall segments in my inventory, as well as uh, the uh, armor-piercing rounds that I have to put into the turrets. So it's kind of something that I'm going to have to uh, do rather quickly, uh, clearing out all these, these biter nests and then putting up the defensive perimeter so that they don't come back. And as you can probably also see that I, I've become a little less uh, stringent about not setting forest fires. I've taken a, a decidedly more cavalier attitude toward that. I've got a nice little forest fire spreading down there. And uh, that probably is just the first of many. Although, uh, uh, looking back on it, I do believe this is the worst one that I set. So, it, it, it's... it's it, you can, oh, okay, th there's another uh, uh, group of biters down there that were already trying to create a new uh, nest in a uh, recently cleared area. So th they're being really quick about moving back into an area that I've already cleared. So again, yeah, this has to be done rather quick to get rid of them all. So uh, yeah, it's, it's just a matter of... of of trying to get things down and then the idea here is that I'm gonna go ahead and clear all these biter nests out and get up a, a loose network of uh, radar outposts so that I can kinda see what's going on. You can see that I've kind of you know left a few gaps here and there because I've been so careless in how I place them down. Uh, but it, it's something that I don't really uh, care about too much and I figure since uh, I'm I'm this close to my factory again, I'm just going to run in and get a few more of the items that I have, uh, that, that I've run out of, rather, and just clear out some of these alien artifacts from my inventory. I'm going to put them in my trash slot so that the robots come along and take them and see them all running out there. Now, at first I thought they were just going to put them down in, into uh, this little box that feeds the modules, but then I realized that's still a steel chest and not a requester chest. So I go ahead and set that up and have it pick everything up. And now that they're all out of my inventory, they can deal with that on their own. Pick up a few more wall segments and then it's just right back out into the wilderness to pick up where I left off. And uh, before I do anything, I'm going to put down one of these radar outposts right here. This way I can also save on a few wall segments because it is sharing it with the border. There's a few more that are trying to set up a, an outpost in an area that I just cleared out. So they're going really fast on this. But the idea here is that once I get all these things cleared out, it will take them at least a certain amount of time before they can come right back in and uh, repopulate the area. So I do have a little bit of a window and even the, when they do come in and resettle the area, it won't be nearly this density for a good long while. So it'll give me some time in uh, having to go back in and sweep up the remaining the, the remainder areas won't take nearly this much time. So, yeah, you can see <laughs> I really don't care about setting the forest on fire anymore. I just let it all burn. I don't use wood for anything. It's just sort of in the way. And uh, when it comes to preventing pollution from spreading too far, well, that's going to happen anyway, so I'm not going to be too concerned about it. Alright, I'm going to put down one of these radar outposts, and it's not going to actually take effect because I put it down during the nighttime, so the solar panels don't have a chance to actually uh, uh, charge the accumulators yet. But once the sun comes up, and I, I, I got a little too cavalier there, so uh, they did end up killing me, and almost killed me again when I went back through the second time you can hear that heartbeat raising but this time I do manage to survive it long enough to uh, to go in for a second and third wave and that's something that actually hasn't happened to me in quite a while uh, being killed during an episode uh, so I, I, I'd like to think that's some kind of progress I don't know 
All right, gonna, gonna clear everything up. These, these nests up here got really super concentrated because they were left alone for so long. It, you, you start to notice that, that the farther away from your starting area you get, the more dense these areas are. And I don't have any follower robots to come along and help me out. It's just me and my flamethrower, and maybe some poison capsules if I ever remember to actually use them. All right, but at that point I'm going to call that as far out as I need to go. Now that I'm out here, I'll have my robots build up the walls and put in some ammunition that I left behind the last time. Uh, that is going to be as far as I push outward, and then yeah, before I put up the uh, the defensive perimeter, that will of course have to happen in the next episode because I don't have them have the supplies in my inventory at the moment. I'm going to head back into the base and uh, and get ready to pick them all up and bring them out. I'm going to end up putting the uh, defensive perimeter out there and then of course clear a nice little buffer outside of it as well uh, so that we can hopefully prevent this from happening for a good long while. But anyway, that is going to be the end of the episode. I'm just going to double check all the progress I had. I want to thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Azrael. Never stop building.